What is going on, Beardos? Welcome back to another video on my channel. This one's going to be quite a bit different than anything I've ever posted before. But nonetheless, I hope you enjoy it uh, and stick around because at the end of the video, I'm going to announce the 200 sub giveaway winner. Um, okay, I guess I'll just get right into it. I'd like to preface this video by saying that this story could go one of two ways, hence the title of the video. If DICE were to make a game like this, it would first and foremost be the campaign of a Battlefield game. It would have elements of Bad Company and Battlefront 2 in it. And if Naughty Dog makes this game, or a game like it, it would be very similar to Uncharted in style. Take your pick, I am just here to tell you my idea and story. I want you to imagine something for me. Imagine living in a country stricken with financial and other social problems. Your preferred political party has just seen their candidate win the presidency of the country. However, one year after his term begins, the minority party in the previous election becomes the majority by a significant margin. Under significant duress, your president reluctantly appoints the leader of the new majority party as chancellor of the country. One year after this appointment, your president dies and the chancellor becomes the new head of state. I don't know if many of you know, but this is precisely what happened in Germany between the years 1932 and 1934. And the reason I'm starting with this is to show that not all Germans were Nazis at the time of Hitler's appointment. As a matter of fact, the majority of people in Germany disagreed with his views during the 1932 presidential election, which he lost um, by majority. I needed to illustrate this point in order to set the stage for the story I'm about to tell. And so we begin with our protagonist. This is a protagonist that I thought up today during a ride in my cart at work. I was on my way to assist somebody with their technological problems and this story came to me. So be warned, it is a very, very rough draft. So, our protagonist. First and foremost, he is German. That's right, you heard me. A German protagonist in a video game during World War II. Something that I don't know if we've ever seen before. But hear me out, hear me out. Our German protagonist's name is Jürgen Gerechtigkeit. His background includes formal schooling and training in archaeological fields. However, after finishing college, Jürgen decided to join the German army because of financial difficulties uh, he encountered. Due to his family's military background, his own intelligence, and some luck, Jürgen quickly became an officer in the German army. Keep in mind, this is all taking place before Hitler's appointment. Shortly after Jürgen becomes an officer in the German army, Hitler comes to power and starts amassing his armies for what we all know today as World War II. As you may or may not know, Hitler was quite fanatical, and during World War II he set up a group called the Nazi Annenerbe, Annenerbe. Sorry for my German, it's really bad. Which means inheritance of the forefathers. This group's sole purpose was to hunt down and find paranormal and religious artifacts that Hitler believed could either help the war effort or prove Nazi beliefs such as Aryan racial superiority. So this is precisely where our protagonist Jürgen comes in. He's a scholar, a man of significant intelligence, and has a background in archaeological studies. In this social and political climate, though, Jürgen had no choice but to remain in the army despite his opposition to Hitler and the Nazi party. He couldn't voice his opinions for fear of losing his life or being thrown in jail for life. When Hitler inquired about people with archaeological backgrounds, Jürgen's name came up as he was already in the army and was a good candidate to carry out the task that Hitler had planned. Jürgen gets promoted to an officer of the Annenerbe and is told to assemble a squad of men that he trusts to help him carry out his mission. Jürgen selects three of his closest comrades in arms, people Jürgen believes are his closest friends in the army, to go with him on his assignment. One of the men that Jürgen picks is named Gunta, and he actually went to school with Jürgen for archaeology. Jürgen views him as especially important in helping complete his task. The other two men are close childhood friends named Klaus and Pita. All of these men became friends before the war and had made a pact to join the army at the same time, before Hitler's appointment. These men, under the command of Jürgen, would be tasked with an expedition to Languedoc in France to find the resting place of 
the Holy Grail. Yeah, that's right. You heard me. The Holy Grail. This is where it becomes very historically fictional, but also, I think, a very good story. So, the story of this game begins with you playing as Jürgen Gerechtekite, leading your hand-picked squad of elite soldiers to France. Various fighting takes place as this is a video game during World War II, but eventually there is a break in the fighting, and you and your comrades begin a search for the Grail. Which, by the way, could lead to various cool gameplay mechanics uh, to switch up the normal shooter tropes, such as puzzles or platforming. Think Uncharted, which is why I brought up Naughty Dog in the title. Eventually, by the surprise of even yourself playing as Jürgen, you find it. That's right. You find the Holy Grail. One of the most significant pieces of religious history ever. This is where the character development really begins. Jürgen came here expecting to find nothing. As a matter of fact, he wanted to find nothing. As a scholar, he knows exactly what it would mean if the Grail fell into Hitler's hands. Jürgen personally despises Hitler and the thought of him having the Grail. So, with great risk to himself, he sits down his squad to explain the situation in hopes that they'll agree with him. At this point, Jürgen is putting the safety of the Grail and his own integrity before his life because he is directly engaging in treason against the Fuhrer. Um, before this scene, though, before I tell you how this scene plays out, I do have to give you some more background on Gunther, Klaus, and Peter. Klaus and Peter were brought up with similar views to Jürgen in a similar situation. They are not fond of Hitler, but all three of these men, uh, Klaus, Jürgen, and Peter, have done what they had to do to survive. Gunther is a much different story. He was brought up with a much wealthier background. Um, Jürgen and Gunther's positions during university were much different, and it was a huge struggle for Jürgen to finish due to financial difficulty. Gunther, on the other hand, had many things given to him throughout his life, and college was a breeze compared to Jürgen's experience. I can now explain how this next scene of Jürgen explaining his position about the Grail gives the story impact that the player will feel if the background information I just described is explained early on in the campaign of this game. So, in this scene, Jürgen explains that the Grail cannot fall into the wrong hands, including Hitler's. Klaus and Peter immediately announce their agreement with him. They feel it is their moral duty to keep the Grail safe and away from Hitler. However, Gunther vehemently objects. Gunther pulls his gun and declares Jürgen, Klaus, and Peter to be traitors. He explains that it should have been him leading this expedition and that he never should have become friends with peasants like these three men. A scuffle ensues. Gunther is shot and badly injured while Jürgen, Klaus, and Peter escape with their lives. This is where the action shooter really takes off. Jürgen and his loyal friends now have the SS and allies trying to kill them. You could have stealth elements in the gameplay, or you could have lots of shooting, uh, lots of action, because of the sheer number of people looking for Jürgen and his friends. As a player, you will literally be fighting and hiding from everybody and trying to keep the Grail safe. After the scuffle I talked about earlier, Gunther immediately goes to his commanding officer and tells him that the squad actually did find the Grail and that Jürgen is on the run with it. Because this is a video game and is historical fiction, anything is possible. So through various fighting and hiding, Jürgen and his squad somehow commandeer a German U-boat and make their way towards South America, holding the crew hostage and getting instructions from them on how to navigate and make their way towards their destination without being detected. Miraculously, as this is a video game, you eventually find your way to Argentina. This campaign has already had extensive fighting gameplay and puzzle gameplay in Europe, specifically France, and possibly other countries, just depending on how that can be worked into the story. And now we find Jürgen in Argentina looking to hide the grail so it never falls into the wrong hands. Meanwhile, the SS is hot on Jürgen's squad's tail because one of the crew members of the U-boat was actually able to alert the German army of Jürgen's treachery. Argentina is where the final standoff in the game will occur. Gunther has been put in charge of the special forces that have followed you playing as Jürgen to Argentina, and it has become personal for him. You and your friends encounter Gunta and his elite squad of SS. From here, though, the story could end in a multitude of ways, but I think the most fitting way for it to end would be for Jürgen to hide or destroy the Grail, possibly, somewhere in Argentina, so that it will never fall into the wrong hands. 
And then after that, I believe it would make the whole story come together and have more impact if Jurgen actually dies at the end, if you, the player, actually die at the end of the game, knowing that you saved the Grail from being in the wrong hands and that you did the right thing. Um, from the beginning of the game, Jurgen tries to do the right thing but struggles internally with many things, including killing people. All Jurgen ever wanted to be was an archaeologist and a normal person, which I think it was the case for a lot of people in Germany at the time. They wanted to be normal. I'm not sure that Dice or Naughty Dog would be bold enough to make the protagonist of one of their games a German in the SS, but I really think showing the perspective of someone in the SS that disagreed with Hitler's point of view would lead to some amazing characters and character development due to the internal struggles that come along with that. Not everyone in Germany at the time of World War II was a Nazi at heart, and I think this perspective could be explored more and expanded upon. So, yeah, that's my story. I hope you guys enjoyed it and would also like to see it made into a video game. Uh, I think it could be special, especially coming from either DICE or Naughty Dog. Uh, if it's done right, I think it could be very, very good to share this perspective. Um, so yeah, uh, I guess I'll announce the winner of my giveaway now. The winner of the giveaway of the $25 Amazon gift card was... I, I just supreme and I'll be sending that Amazon gift card ASAP um, yeah I really hope you guys enjoyed this video um, let me know what you think of scripted videos in the comments and remember this is Beardo TV Yeah.